Hey, what's up everyone and welcome or welcome back if you're one of the loyal people who's waited around for me for over a year to my channel. So today we are going to be making my Halloween costume and hopefully a costume I'll be able to wear to the Ren Fair and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to be dressing up as Lagatha from the show Vikings for Halloween and I'm making the costume from basically scratch. So I will post a picture of the two costumes I combined to make this one. Yeah, let's just get into it. That's all I really have to say. We're making a Lagatha costume and I'm gonna be making some some fake leather armor and all that good stuff. So stick around to see what we can do here. All right, let's go. Okay, to start these bracers off, you need painter's tape, duct tape, a sharpie, and some saran wrap. Start by wrapping your arm in the saran wrap all the way around wherever you want the bracer to be. So that's what I'm doing there. And then take edges of what you've done and put painter's tape all around the ends of the saran wrap. So that would be at the top of my arm and at my fingertips. Please ignore the hand piece. I thought I was going to make a glove, but I ended up not. So. That's not going to be part of it. It's just from the wrist to the elbow. So then I covered it in duct tape and drew on the shapes that I wanted to cut out. Wherever I wanted a piece to be, that's where I would draw a little line to kind of mark it. And then I numbered them out to keep track of what they were. I also wrote chain mail on the spot that was going to be just chain mail. And then, easy as that, you start cutting it off. This part's a little tricky, so kind of just take your time and work with the duct tape and you know don't stab yourself so I just go slow and work it down it's a very annoying process but we got there in the end <laughs> Okay, now that you have it off, finish cutting it out if you didn't, and then lay it all out. If there's anything that's a little messy, kind of just add some tape and fix it up. That's what I'm doing there. And then just start cutting out the pieces till you have a bunch of different separates all laid out. And then what you're going to want to do is trace that all to packing paper, as I am doing here. Once you're done, make sure to number them all or write down what they are so you can keep track of each piece and where it's going to go in the final design. And then you'll have something like that. Okay, next you're going to want to cut out all the paper pieces you used. Ignore the dashes. I don't know why I did that, but I ended up cutting them all off, so... Just cut along the lines that you originally drew. No need for the dashes. We're not sewing anything, so. Next, you're gonna wanna draw all the paper pieces you've, of your pattern you've got and put them onto EVA foam. And we've got the first piece of our bracer. It's a little big, so I'll have to resize, but it's actually way big because I think, oh no, I think this part meets together and then, but yeah, I can smooth out the edges with my rotary tool. I can actually just flip this over and make the other side too. So now I'm gonna take the piece of foam and I'm gonna texturize it. Look at that. Is it showing up in the camera? Oh yeah, there it is. Beautiful. Okay, and we're back. So last night I got a little dicey. First I didn't know how to use the contact cement and nothing was glowing. Let me show you what we've got so far. Ta-da! Nice tight bond now, but it was like really frustrating me so I looked into it. So we're getting somewhere, just gotta do the other side. I mean, it's coming together. Mm -hmm. But here it is, the other side, which I need to glue on. And then I'm gonna cut out the top. I'm gonna do some more rotary edging and texturizing and stuff, but I just want to get the basic shape down. I'm going to turn you around and I'm going to get cutting. Oh, 
Okay, so for the contact cement, I didn't really explain what issues I was having, but basically I didn't realize that you were supposed to let each side dry completely before you try to stick them together. I thought it was like regular glue where you stick them together while they're still wet, but it's not. So make sure both sides are completely dry and then hold them together for like 15 seconds and the bond will be very, very strong. So this is really good to note, something I had no clue of when I started, but now I know and it's really good stuff. That's what I'm doing here, just cementing all the pieces together. So it's been probably a month or so since the last clip I filmed. So today we're getting back into the costume. So let me show you what we have. Quick recap. We have these two pieces. So this is this is what we have, the two arm pieces. So today I'm going to heat gun them so they stay like folded over. I'm gonna do more of the tin foil detailing on them so that the texture is a little more leather looking. I'm gonna drill in the holes for the ties and for like the wrap that goes on this side because the whole thing's like aligned in this leather like wrapping, lining. I'll, I'm going to prep it for paint and start painting and that's what I want to finish today. Let's get started with some heat gun action. Okay, I pulled up a picture. Alright, here's the picture I'm using for reference so I'm going to mark on this or I want the holes to be before I start drilling because that'd be kind of crazy to not. So hopefully go well. So I'm just gonna use a pencil for this. So as I said, I'm just marking down the holes using a ruler so they're all evenly spaced out. Then I'm just taking my rotary tool and drilling them all out with a drill bit. Okay. We've got the holes. Look at that. Do the other side and then I'm gonna prime for paint. So, I will see you for paint priming. And we're back. Here's what we got. So here's what we have. You can see that texture is coming through. It's a little shiny, but I'm gonna weather them. And for the primer, I used Plasti Dip. And for the paint, I just used like a Rust-Oleum Brown that I had lying around. So next, I'm gonna lace them. And then we're gonna weather them because I think I want the lacing to look weathered as well. So yeah, that's what I'm about to do right now. Let's do it. So here I just laced them through the holes going around the whole thing in like a weaving motion. Another thing to note is my holes were too small so I had to use a pencil to widen them. Next time I'm just going to use a wider drill bit. Okay, so I finished lining it. Yeah, and as you can see it's like folding a little wonky. So I'm going to take this stuff which is going to lace up through these holes right there all along the edge and that'll look be what ties it around my arm i'm gonna see if doing that will help it lay flat or if i need to like reshape it with the heat gun or not so that's what i'm gonna do right now so i'm just weaving the wax string through the holes like a shoelace Okay, so for the chain mail, I did make my own rings and I started to film it, but I realized I didn't really know what I was doing. So I did leave a link in the description for the video I followed for making the chain mail and how I weaved it together. There's like a specific pattern you're supposed to follow, which I kind of strayed from. So I highly recommend checking out the video I put in the description if you're interested in making chain mail and how to do it properly, unlike me, who totally just went off on my own and kind of paid for it later. So yeah, but that's what I'm doing here, just connecting all the rings together.
Paint meal is finally done and we are ready to start painting. So for painting, I basically went over the entire thing with a slightly lighter brown than I had initially spray painted on to the bracers. So that's what I'm doing there, kind of just spreading that all around. The brush is fairly dry and doesn't have much paint on it, so I'm really just doing this pretty lightly. You can see I'm wiping off the excess right there. Next, I took a black paint mixed with a little water and put that all around all the edges. I immediately wiped it off with a slightly damp paper towel and then blended it in with the same brown that was on my paintbrush. And then I kind of just went back and forth with that until I had a black and a brown ratio that I kind of liked. But basically you're going to want to have black darkness around the edges and get lighter as you go into the middle to make it look the most worn. Next up are the studs, which I literally just used googly eyes that I spray painted a nice gold color that I had lying around. Spray paint the mice in gold. Sorry for the out of focus. It will happen again. I spray painted them and then hot glued them all on in the same pattern as in the picture. I did use hot glue for this and it was not working too great. So I, so I would recommend using something a little stronger like Gorilla Glue or E6000 glue, which I definitely should have done. But I was in a pinch, so, you know, gotta you do what you gotta do. Okay, so this is the um, corset I'm gonna wear underneath the thing I'm gonna make for here, which will obviously cover the zipper and is gonna look probably version of the costume. So I'm kind of doing a mixture of the two. But anyways, I'm gonna do this the same way I did the sleeve thing. I'm gonna make a pattern while wearing. So let's get wrapping. Okay, so for the belt, we're doing the same thing. We're starting with the saran wrap everywhere you want your belt or piece to be. Putting painter's tape around the edges of the design. And then covering the whole thing in some duct tape. Once you're done covering it in the duct tape, draw the shape you would like yours to be. Okay, I got this thing. And it just barely meets in the back, so it'll be good for a lace-up. And now I just need to trace this onto paper. Now, just like with the other piece, trace the pattern onto some paper and cut it out. This one's a little easier because it's just one big piece. Next, take that pattern and put it on your foam and do the same thing, just cut out the piece. And then just uh, shave down the edges with the rotary tool. Mark down the holes and drill out all those little holes. Okay, all the holes are drilled and we are ready to prime and paint this piece. Okay, so I started priming this and remembered that I did not do my tinfoil texturizer strategy on it. So in the middle of priming, I'm going to attempt to texturize it. Here's a friendly reminder to make sure to use your heat gun when you're doing the tinfoil method, because it really helps it get into those little cracks and make it look good. 
Once again, we are lacing up just like we did for the bracers. All right, and we are already back to painting. So I'm just doing the same method with the black along the edges, wiping off the excess. As you can see, just building up over time and blending it out to not overwhelm it at once with a ton of black. And kind of adding in that brown to help blend it out as well. This is a back and forth process. I'm just kind of like working my way through it. And then kind of just covering the whole thing in the brown that I like and lighter brown to give it more texture. trying to get the crevices from the indents to really pop so I'm painting over the black and then with some brown and then I'm taking a damp paper towel and kind of wiping away the excess to really make them pop out which really helped with a weathered look and made the leather look more realistic and worn like it probably would in like a battle so that's what I'm doing here Next, I'm adding some stitching details, just going over under with the same wax thread in a light color. I'm also using a leather needle because this stuff is really thick, so I wanted something that could really work its way through it. And I just went across the whole thing in a straight line over and under, over and under, until I reached the other end. Next, I decided that I kind of didn't like how the corset was sitting on me, so I wanted to cut it into two, and instead of having it cinch in the back, cinch on either side of me so there's a front and a back piece with two lace-ups on each side. So as you can see, I literally just cut it in half, smoothed out the edges to make them straight, and then I ended up drilling new holes in the other side and touching up the paint and having it lace up both sides, which I think turned out really well, which you will see at the end of the video. Okay, so for the boots, I think you know what we're doing by now. We're starting with our saran wrap, going into the duct tape all the way up. Sorry for the out of focus again. Drawing our shape on our leg to see how we want it to look. And then cut the whole thing out. Draw it on our paper. Cut the shape out from the paper. Make sure we like how it looks on the leg. And then cut it out or trace it out on the foam and then cut it out on the phone. Use your Dremel to smooth out the edges again. Then use the heat gun tinfoil method to texturize it. Then we mark and drill out all our holes till it looks like this. And of course, prime and paint. <laughs> now it's ready to lace. Another day of watching Peter play Breath of the Wild. I'm doing the same method to lace up this one, except I'm also doing a straight across method 
for the holes going down the front. So I'm going back and forth to make it look like it's being held together by the strings, basically. All right, and time to paint, starting with the brown base, the lighter brown base. And then going into that black weathering again, darkening up all those edges, making sure to get rid of those white holes. And just once again, building up the colors and blending them until I have a look that I am happy with and looks the most like real leather to me. Once again, just doing that white method to try to get it a little more weathered looking and of course blended. Okay guys, here are all the finished pieces. Ah. All right, so we've got the stupid sword hol the sword holster, excuse me. I glued the back because I'm lazy and these snaps were, t but it looks good. We've got the belt with the freshly drilled holes. Where are they? Here they are, these are my size. Here's like the real holes. And here's all the way down here. I used this last one right there. So we got the belt. We've got the other belt corset piece right there. The leg guards to protect the shins. And then, of course, these. We RIP have already lost some studs. That's okay. It gets the idea across, so. Um, yeah, we did have a technical difficulty. These little stringy straps suck. They're terrible, these ones. Terrible. Terrible to lace, terrible to tie, don't hold really well. So I did replace the, them with the thicker leather on the arms, and I'm gonna do the same thing to the one side on the corset since this one doesn't come off ever. So I'm gonna swap that. I'm gonna leave these because they're already laced and they don't really need to be unlaced. I have a few extras, like clothing extras, that I didn't make, and I'll show those real quick. Okay, we've got the extras that I did not make, but they complete the costume, so. First part, though my least favorite part, is the boots. These aren't the perfect boots. I probably would change these, but these are what we got, and they work, so. The shin guards cover most of them anyway, so it's like, whatever. <sighs> Sorry, I'm out of breath. <sighs> Next, we got the horn. I do replace my sword with this horn, just because I ran out of time to make a sword, so this kind of just works for that instead. And it's still Viking-y, so, you know, it's cool. Teal tunic. A uh, corset to go underneath the belt, kind of complete the look. And then, of course, the wig. Sorry, my room's a mess. Okay, so yeah, I got this wig off Etsy. This person braids them, like takes, they take like synthetic wigs and braid them by hand. So really cool. I'll link that below because I think that's awesome. And anything else. And that's everything. Hey.